بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Expectations from the creation will cause disappointment, will cause regret, will cause remorse. Expectation from the creator of the creation will bring it minan contentment. Due to our weak iman, we expect from the creation, but our expectations have not surpassed more than that. Maulana Yusuf Ali used to say, until we don't lose complete hope in the creation, we cannot expect to benefit from the creator, the Khaliq. So this heart should be empty of everything else. We should uh, clear this heart when you want to fill water in a glass, you will clean the glass. If there is an impurity, no matter what water, even if it is zamzam, but that contamination will contaminate all the water. This heart should be clear and clean of all ghayrullah. Malana Ilyas Rahmatullah say that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to give in, he will even tear down the roof. So much Allah will endow and favor a person with. But this is on condition that we lose complete hope in the creation, in the creation and total hope in the Creator. And Mawlana Ali Ashmala used to give the example. He said there was a king who went to hunting one day and during his hunt on his travels, he got lost from his entourage. And in desperation, he became hungry and starving. And he was on his last moment until he came across a hut. He managed to get to the door, knocked on the door and collapsed. So that person came to the door, he found somebody on the floor, uh, treated them, see to their needs. And this king recovered. But he never mentioned anything and his appearance was such, obviously over such a long period, of uh, searching for aid and assistance, there was no sign that he was the king. So he was impressed that this person, a villager, a Bedouin, uh, saved my life. So he told him that if ever you come into the city, then ask them for the palace. So he said, what's the palace? He said, just tell them you're looking for the palace. And when you get to the palace, they ask you who are you looking for, tell them, tell the person in charge of the palace, the lost jungle person is here, the lost jungle person is here. So it happened that he was in the, the city and uh, he followed the instructions of the king, came to the palace, said the lost jungle person is here. They took him to the king, the king was overwhelmed, he fed him and seen to his needs. And uh, he asked him when he was leaving and he made arrangements that when you leave, there are certain drums I will give you as a gift. So the villager, the Ati, did not understand. But the day he left, he was uh, shocked when he found that there was drums filled with gold coins. Drums filled with gold coins. So anyway, they escorted him to the outskirts of the city. Now he thought, so this is so heavy, this is so much. Where am I going to carry this here? What am I going to do with all of this? So he said, Ya Allah, I had no intention for this. You brought it here till, till the outskirts of the city. This is from you. So Ya Allah, now you need to take it to my house. Ya Allah, you need to take it to my house. I'm not going to carry it. Meanwhile, some thieves attracted and uh, realized that the king had given somebody a grand prize. So when they seen the drums there, they, they made a plan to, to grab it and as they opened the first drum, they found that there were snakes inside. They seen, perceived all snakes in the drum. They said the rest of the drums would be the same. Thus, Valija, this Diyati has tricked us. We will teach him a lesson of his life. So they decided, they went to his house and they said at night, through his roof, we will pour all the snakes. And as the villager was sleeping, he started hearing noise of gold coins falling down in his house. And he looked and he said, all the gold coins coming down from the roof. And he said, thank you Allah for doing my work. Thank you Allah for doing my work. So, when this heart is clear of Allah and attention is only to Allah, and in all conditions, we can accept, expect 
uh, the help and the nusrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever his decision at that point in time is whether it is ajil or ajil it is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but whatever is best for the believer Allah will send that so uh, taqwa the 20th benefit of taqwa is that a person is considered noble and honorable in Allah's eyes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor these people inna akramakum indallahi atqakum the most noble the most honorable in Allah's eyes are those who are muttaqi so taqwa it does not matter whether you are male or female whether you are white or black whether you are an Arab or non-Arab whether you are rich or poor whether you are healthy or sick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's no criteria for honor except the criteria of taqwa verily the most honored of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous the most muttaqi and we find how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored the muttaqeen Allah honored sahaba radiallahu anhum as Asim bin Umar narrated when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once woke up from his sleep Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and said man rajulun min ummatika mata layla that such a man from your mother has passed away last night and such a man is tabshara bi mawtihi ahlu sama that the people the inhabitants of the heavens are rejoicing they are happy and elated because they are eager to meet him so Nabi said la a'lamu illa anna sa'dan am sa'danifan ma fa'ala sa'dun I know none other than Sa'd was ill yesterday evening. What has happened to Sa'd? Sahaba informed Nabi والسلام, that he passed away and his tribesmen had transported his body to the locality. So Rasulullah after Fajr Salat left with Sahaba and walked so fast. He walked so fast that the straps of Sahaba's shoes started to break and the shawls began to fall off their shoulders. So one sahabi said, Ya Rasulullah, Kad batatta nas, O Nabi of Allah, you are tiring the people out, your, your speed has made us exhausted. So he replied, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inni akhsha an tasbiqana ilayhi al-malaika, Kama sabaqatna ila al I am very concerned and I'm worried that the angels may beat us to it like how they beat us to Hanzala radiallahu an. So such honor that even the Malaika made the ghusl of Sahaba the same Sa'd radiallahu an, the Munafiqeen mocked when his janaza was being taken and it was very light. So they said, how light is this of Sa'd? So Nabi wasalam, then said that Sa'd is no ordinary individual. He's no in ordinary individual. To be present for the janazah and the funeral of Sa'd, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent 70,000 angels that have never set foot on earth. 70,000 angels have come that have never set foot on earth. The same Sahabi that said that uh, Hazrat Salma bin Aslam, we were standing at the door of the room waiting to enter after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was none in the room besides the body of Hazrat Sa'd. I saw Nabi والسلام, walk as if he was climbing over the shoulders of people. Seeing this, I stopped in, at my tracks and uh, Rasulullah motioned me to stop. Then those that were behind me also indicated that they should stop. After waiting for a while, 
Rasulullah sallallahu came out and said, Oh Nabi of Allah, I saw you walk as if you were climbing over people's shoulders. And there was nobody in the room. There was none present. Nabi alayhi salam replied, The room was so full with angels. I was unable to. Ma qadartu ala majlisin. I was unable to sit down. Hatta qabadha li malakum min al-malaika ahada janahi. Until one of the angels folded their wings. Because only then I had space to sit fajalastu. So, so noble, so honored they were in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even the angels came and honored Sahaba radiallahu anhum. So taqwa in all conditions. Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi who is amongst the maqbul and chosen servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah has honored Imam Bukhari rahimullah beyond our comprehension in every era. We see his book, Asah, the most authentic book after the Kitab of Allah was Al-Bukhari. It's mentioned once he was traveling by boat on a journey to seek out knowledge and he had taken with him 1,000 dinars. So one of the fellow travelers acquainted themselves with Imam Bukhari and they showed love and admiration and there was the, the ardent followers etc. And nowadays people also put on a show. It was in time in memorial where people befriend you for ulterior motives. So during the voyage, the man sat in his company and the friendship developed and um, Imam Bukhari informed him about the 1000 dinars. This person came to find out about it. So after Imam Bukhari information leaked to this man, the very next morning, the man woke up and began to cry and scream. He rubbed his clothing apart, he was slapping his face as if just something great and big had happened. So the shopmate today was wondering now what's wrong. So he didn't say anything and he was in a state of shock and he put on a, a grand show and he tried to compose himself and, and, and uh, make people think that he's in a bad situation. So after insistence and persistence, they asked him what's wrong and he finally said that I had a bag that had contained 1000 dinars and I had lost it, I think so somebody had stolen it. So the crewmen who were in charge of the shop, uh, the shop decided to, to search the passengers, search their belongings and they went from one person to the next. Imam Bukhari, Allah had given him Basirat, realized the ploy. So he threw the bag of money over the shop. He threw it into the water. When they came and they searched him, they found nothing. All the passengers were searched, they found nothing. And uh, the people in charge of the shop went back to this person and said, you made up the story, it was a false claim. They took him to task and they chastised him for the in inconvenience. So the ship docked, it reached the shore, the passengers disembarked and this so-called old friend came to Imam Bukhari and said, what happened to the bag of money, my friend? So Imam Bukhari smiled and said, I threw it into the sea. So the person said, I could you have thrown a thousand gold coins into the sea? So Imam Bukhari said, you ignorant person, do you not know that I spent my entire life gathering a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that the world acknowledges my truthfulness and trustworthiness? Is it possible, is it befitting for me to put myself in this position of compromise where people can accuse me of theft, I would rather lose, I would rather lose dinars and gold coins over losing the precious pearl, the knowledge of Nubuwa and the reputation which 
I had collected over a lifetime, the reputation which I had collected over a lifetime, I would not compromise on that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has afforded us the ni'am of Iman, Islam. It should not be through this noble acceptance. People are taken away from Islam and say, is this the life of a Muslim? Is this how Muslims behave? So we need to set a standard and we need to set such a criteria which is a means of people getting hidayat and not people going away from Islam. He said about uh, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz who was Umar al-Thani that in his era also the sheep and the wolves would graze together. And uh, it so happened one day that there was an elderly lady sitting at her home and then she asked what has happened. So they said that a wolf had devoured a sheep. فقالت, she took an oath, وَرَبِّ الْكَعَبَى لَقَدْ مَاتَ الْأَشَجْ that Umar bin Abdul Aziz had passed away. And they recorded the date and the time. فَهِذَا هِيَ السَّاعَةَ And that was the moment of the death of Hazrat Umar bin Abdul Aziz. So such honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had endowed the friends of Allah and such barakah and such blessings that there was, he set a standard, he had set a standard. When he was made Khalifa, he had a lot of properties, real estate, orchards, and he used to wear the best of clothing, the best of ritars as well. And he made, he had an entourage of khuddam and servants. And he had the best of horses, so in today's times he was there, he was the man. He was in his Ferrari, he was uh, chauffeured, he had, he had it all. And his wife was Fatima bint Abdul Malik. She was the crown of, 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 of women. But when he became Amirul Mu'mineen, he sold all his properties, he freed all his servants, slaves. Whatever wealth he had, he entered it into the Baytul Mal. So nobody could point a finger at him, nobody could point a finger at him. I've got nothing and I'll go with nothing. I've got nothing now and I'll go with nothing. Conflict of interest. Then he told his wife, If you want to be with me, then all your jewelry, all your wealth, you need to get rid of it. So she entered it into the Baytul Mal. She entered it into the Baytul Mal. When he was passing away, then people said, you've left your children nothing. You've left your children nothing. He said, الصَّالِحِينَ Allah is the friend of the pious, the friends of Allah, the muttaqeen. I taught them taqwa. Allah will suffice for them. So they say that a time came where the progeny of Umar bin Abdul Aziz, Allah gave them so much barakah that one one son could prepare entire army, they would sponsor the entire army. And the same children of Hisham, they were seen begging, they were seen begging. So taqwa is a means where we gain proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah honors a person. The amal for today is that we should be not dependent on the creation and depend only on Allah. Don't turn to the creation. Jibreel alayhi salam came to Nabi alayhi salam and said, Ya Muhammad, ish ma shaita. Love life how you want to, فَإِنَّكَ مَيِّتْ You will die. وَعَمَلْ مَا شِئْتَ فَإِنَّكَ مَجْزِيٌ بِهِ Do as you please but you will be accountable to Allah. 
وحبيب من شئت ان لاف هو يو ويش فانك مفارقه يو ويل ديفينلي بي سيبريتد فروم ذا وان هو يو لاف واعلم ان ان الشرف المؤمن قيام الليل the nobility and the honor of a believer is in engage in worship in tahajjud in the darkness of the night wa'izzuhu istighna'uhu 'anin nas and his honor is being independent of people not to rely at all on people may allah give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin